Have you ever thought of the amazing progress we, as human beings, have made in various spheres of life, be it language, literature, art, and architecture, science, or religion? Have you ever wondered how all this has happened and how all this is possible? Do you know this happened because we did not have to make a fresh beginning each time, but were able to make use of and build on the work of past generations. You have never had to bother about having to make your own script or creating a new language system for yourself. These are already given to you, which you enjoy as a member of the society. Then you build on it by making your contributions or additions, which further becomes an asset for the coming generations. Now this is a continuous and never ending process. It is a precious position unique to human beings and is known as culture. Culture, as you already have known, is a way of life. You, your family, has a culture and so does your region and your country. You may be curious to know about the uniqueness of Indian culture and find out its distinct characteristics. Now let us see the characteristics of Indian culture. Indian culture is as many sided as life. It includes intellectual and social aspects of any human being. It also takes into account the aesthetic instinct as well as the spiritual impulse of human beings. It has also an effect and appeal to the subconscious as a force making for the formation of character. Now if you look at the map of India, and you see India is a vast country with a lot of diversity in a physical and social environment. We see people around us speaking different languages, having different religions and practicing different rituals. You can also see these diversities in their food habits and dress patterns. Besides, look at the myriad forms of dance and music in our country. But within all these diversities, there is an underlying unity which acts as a cementing force. The intermingling of people has been steadily taking place in India over centuries. A number of people of different racial stock, ethnic backgrounds and religious beliefs have settled down here. Let us not forget that the composite and dynamic character of Indian culture is a result of the rich contributions of all these diverse cultural groups over a very long period of time. The distinctive features of Indian culture and its uniqueness are the precious possession of all Indians. Many great cultures had developed in different countries and regions of the world. Many of them have perished or have been replaced by other cultures. But do you know that Indian culture has had an enduring character? Despite major changes and upheavals, significant threads of continuity can be traced throughout the course of Indian history right up to the present day. You may have read about the Harappan civilization, which flourished in the Indian continent over 4,500 years ago. Archaeologists have found evidences to show that cultures existed here even before the matured phases of the Harappan civilization. This tells us that we have had a very long history behind us, and yet, what is amazing that even today, the pattern of a house in an Indian village is not very different from that of a Harappan house. Some aspects of Harappan culture are still practiced, such as the worshipping of Mother Goddess and Pashupati. Similarly, Vedic, Buddhist, Jain and many other traditions continue to be followed even today. At the same time, one should not lose sight of the changes as are evident in the multi-storied buildings in the metropolitan cities like Mumbai and Delhi, quite unlike the Harappan houses that had only one or two stories. The point to be noted here is that continuity and change in our civilizations has gone hand in hand. In fact, a remarkable feature of Indian culture is that along with continuity, it has kept on changing, whereas the basic spirit of our culture has continued. It has kept on discarding what was becoming irrelevant in the modern age. In a long history, there have been periods of ups and downs. As a result, movements have grown and reform 
brought about the reforms movement in the Vedic religion brought about by Jainism and Buddhism in the 6th century BC and the religious and social awakening in the 18th and 19th centuries in modern India are a few examples where revolutionary changes were brought about in Indian thought and practices. Yet the thread of basic philosophy of Indian culture continues and still persists. Thus, a process of continuity and change has always been a feature of Indian culture. This shows the dynamic character of our Indian culture. Indian culture over the last three millennia has successfully but quietly observed the best assimilable parts from other religions and cultures from time to time and integrated them into itself. Indeed, few cultures in the world have such a variety as the Indian culture. You may perhaps wonder why the people of Kerala use coconut oil while the people of Uttar Pradesh are using mustard oil for cooking. This is because Kerala is a coastal state and coconut grows here in plenty. While Uttar Pradesh is a plain area which is favorable for the growth of mustard. What is the similarity in the Bhangra dance of Punjab or the Pongal of Tamil Nadu or the Bihu dance of Assam? Both are celebrated after a rich harvest of crops. After all, India is a predominantly agricultural country. Have you noticed the different languages that we speak like Bengali, Tamil, Gujarati or Uriya? India is the home of many forms of dance and music which we normally use for festivals and marriages or even the birth of a child. A large number of languages and dialects are spoken in a country which has led to the growth of a great variety of literature. People belonging to eight great religions of the world coexist here in a harmonious manner. Do you know that India is home to many religions of the world like Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism and of course Hinduism. Numerous styles of architecture, sculptures and paintings have developed here. Different styles of music and dance, both folk and classical, exist in this country. So also are numerous festivals and customs. This wide variety has led to the making of Indian culture, both composite, one, and rich and beautiful at the same time. Why is there so much variety in our culture? There are many reasons for this. One of them is the vastness of the country and variations in its physical and climatic features. It is an obvious reason for the variety. The second important reason for the variety in our culture is the intermingling among various ethnic groups. Since time immemorial, people from far and near have been coming and settling here. We find people belonging to different racial stocks like the Purato, Australoids, the Negroids and the Mongoloids living in India. Various ethnic groups like the Iranians, the Greeks, the Kushans, the Shakas, Hunas, Arabs, Turks, Mughals and Europeans also came to India, settled here and intermixed with the local population. The people belonging to other cultures brought their cultural habits, thoughts and ideas which got amalgamated into the existing Indian culture. You will be surprised to know that it was only around 2nd century BC that stitched clothes such as salwars, kurtas, topis, etc. This was brought to India by the Kushans, the Shakas and the Parathians. Prior to that, Indians wore clothes which were unstitched. The latest is the introduction of shirts, trousers, skirts, etc. which were brought to India by the Europeans in the 18th century. India through the ages has shown a remarkable capacity for assimilation of ideas. This has contributed to the variety and richness of our culture along with contacts with outside cultures. Cultural exchanges between different regions of India has also continued. The chicken work of Lucknow, Pulkari embroidery of Punjab, the Kantha embroidery of Bengal, Patola of Orissa show a distinct regional flavor. Although the centers in the south, north, east and west of India had their characteristic cultures, yet this did not develop in absolute isolation. In spite of physical barriers, Indians used to travel from one part of the country to another for trade or pilgrimage. Some regions were joined together through conquest or by alliance. As a result, people transmitted cultural habits and thoughts from one part of the country to the other. Military campaigns too took people from one place to another. This helped in exchange of ideas. 
Such contacts have led to the development of commonness in Indian culture, which has been maintained throughout our history. Another unifying factor is climate. Despite geographical diversity and climatic variations, India experiences an inherent unity. The system of monsoons is the most important component of the Indian climatic pattern and this gives unity to the whole country. The coming of the monsoons has ensured that agriculture remains the main occupation of the people of India. On the other hand, the differences in physical features have affected the food habits, dress, houses and economic activities of people leading to the formation of social, economic and political institutions. These factors, in turn, influence the thinking and philosophy of the people. The variety in physical features and climate of India has thus led to the development of a variety of cultures in different regions. The typical features of different regions have been given some identity to these cultures. The composite nature of our culture is reflected in our music, our dance forms, drama and act forms like painting, sculpture and architecture as well. Our literature in different languages also reflects this composite nature. Unity in diversity is reflected in our political forms as well. During the early Vedic period, society was pastoral. That is, people used to move from one place to another in search of greener pastures. But as these people started practicing agriculture, they settled down. This settled life led to community development and growth of towns which needed rules and regulations. Thus emerged a political organization. This included the sabhas and samitis which were political bodies through which people participated in governance. In course of time, the concept of rashtra emerged and possession of territory became the new measure of power. In some places, republics came up. The period from 6th to 4th century BC is known as the age of Mahajanpads in India. In these kingdoms, kings had more powers. Subsequently, large empires were also established with emperors exercising absolute powers. You may be aware of ancient rulers such as Ashoka, Samudragupta and Harshvardhan. The Mughals also established a vast empire in India. The British established themselves in India and in 1858 India became a part of the British Empire. However, in 1947 we were able to gain our freedom after a long, long struggle. Today, we are a sovereign, socialist, secular and democratic republic and a uniform system of government prevails over the length and breadth of the country. The secular character of Indian culture is a result of the intermingling of people belonging to diverse cultural groups over a long period of time. There have been instances of occasional conflicts here and there, but by and large, people have lived together peacefully for centuries. The popular cultural traditions of India are the best examples of such cultural synthesis in which a large number of people belonging to different religious groups come together. You are aware that there is a great variety of thoughts and habits in our country. Among such a variety, dominance of one particular thought is not possible. You will recall that Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jain, Parsis and Jews live in India. The constitution declares India to be a secular country. Everyone is free to profess, practice and propagate any religion of his or her choice. The state has no religion of its own and all religions are treated equally by the state. No one is to be discriminated on the basis of religion. Right to freedom of religion ensures secular nature of our polity. In the western context, Development of secularism meant complete separation of the church and the state. In India, secularism is taken as a more positive concept to cope with the complex social structure in the country with a view to protecting the interest of all, particularly the minorities. The concept of coexistence has not been confined to the geographical and political boundaries of the country only. India has a universal outlook and it has been promoting the messages of peace and harmony to the entire world. India has been raising a strong voice against racialism and colonialism. 
it has protested against the formation of power blocks in the world. In fact, India became one of the founder members of the non-aligned movement. India is committed to the development of other underdeveloped countries in the world. In this manner, India has been discharging her responsibilities as a part of the world fraternity and has been contributing to the progress of the world. India is popularly known to be a land of spirituality, particularly to the West. However, Indian history from ancient times to present day shows that the development of materialistic and non-materialistic culture have been going on alongside. You will recall that the Harappan civilization was an urban one. It had a systematic town planning where roads cut each other at right angles. They had a profound knowledge of mathematics, weights and measures. They had built their towns in a scientific manner and had an elaborate drainage system. The Harappans had external trade and traveled across the seas to trade with the Sumerians. Excellent books on medicine, planets, stars were written. Discoveries of theories like Earth rotates around the sun or Earth is round were made by Indians long, long before Europeans accepted them. Similarly, in the area of mathematics and in the field of medicine and other sciences, India's achievements in ancient times have been remarkable. There was no opposition or resistance by religions or other thoughts in pursuing such knowledge. In philosophical thought, even atheist thinking developed and grew in India. You may be aware that Jainism and Buddhism are silent about the existence of God. What does all this tell us? Indeed, that Indian culture has been both materialistic and non-materialistic or spiritualistic. Our cultural identities are based on various factors such as religion and region. As a result, each Indian possesses multiple identities. Which of these identities asserts itself at a certain point of time and prevails over the others depends on the political, social or economic context in which the person finds himself or herself. Thus, each person may have some things in common with another, but may be vastly different in some other aspects. For example, except belief, forms of worship and rituals, there may be little that is common among those who follow a particular faith from the point of view of the whole country. Even in the forms of worship and rituals, there are sectarian and regional differences. You will be surprised to find that Hindus are not all similar, nor are all the Muslims. Brahmins in Tamil Nadu are quite different from their counterparts in Kashmir. Similarly, Muslims in Kerala and Uttar Pradesh are dissimilar in several aspects of their culture. Regional identities are more real. People of different religions and jatis may have common regional cultural traits like language, food, dress, values and also the worldview. In Bengal, both Hindus and Muslims take pride in being Bengalis. Elsewhere, one finds Hindus, Christians and Muslims sharing several elements of regional culture. In principle, different religious groups owe their allegiance to different religious doctrines. For instance, the Vedas and the Shastras may be sources of inspiration for Hindus and the Bible for Christians via Quran and Hadith for Muslims. However, at the levels of rituals and lifestyles, there is a lot of intermingling among followers of different religions. Ethnic culture is strong among the tribal groups. For example, in the small state of Nagaland, there are more than a dozen tribes and they differ from each other in their dress, speech and belief. Bastar district of Chhattisgarh has several groups claiming different ethnic origins. In the modern context, there are at least three significant influences on a culture. They are westernization, emergent national cultural styles and popular culture. Before independence, some western modes were adopted by the aristocracy and members of the civil services. The influence over the years has spread to the middle classes and to a small extent to the villages as well. 
The growing demand for English medium schools in the villages is a proof of this statement. During the struggle for freedom, a new style emerged. This became a national style. For example, the Gandhi cap and khadi may now be only ceremonial and a symbol, but it contributed to the unity of the country and provided commonness to culture. Popular culture, which is the product of mass media, is another unifying factor. The impact of films has been tremendous. Radio and television also reshape images and attitudes. Their hold on us is undeniable. Modern media has promoted issues that are of both traditional and public interest. We will now sum up the important aspects of Indian culture so that you may become more familiar and understand it better. Number one, the meaning of culture is very wide and comprehensive. It has been defined as a sum total of integrated learned behavior. It connotes a way of life of the people living in a society. Secondly, culture constitutes knowledge, belief, arts, morals, law, customs, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by humans as members of the society. Due to its adaptability and comprehensiveness, Indian culture has survived through the ages. Unity in diversity is one of the major characteristics of Indian culture, which makes it unique. A synthesis of various cultures came about through the ages to give shape to what is recognized as Indian culture today. Spirituality and value-based lifestyle is the core of Indian culture, but it has a very scientific temperament too, thereby meaning that any rites and rituals that we have in our country has a scientific value attached to it. Thank you.